What's going on guys, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today I'm going to be doing part 3 of my $200 gaming slash emulation PC build. If you haven't seen the first two parts, go ahead and check them out, links in the description. Basically, this is an inexpensive setup to run most emulators and a lot of great PC games. I personally don't have $200 into this build here. I got the PC itself with 4GB of RAM and a 250GB hard drive for free. I added an extra 4GB of RAM, bringing the total up to 8, and an NVIDIA GT 1030. For the CPU, we're working with an i5-2400 at 3.1GHz, 8GB of 1333MHz RAM, and an NVIDIA GT 1030 GDDR5 version. If you go with the 1030, make sure you get the GDDR5 version. Don't get the 4, it's a lot less powerful. If you're interested in picking one of these up or building something similar for $200, check out part one of my video. I'll leave links in the description. Ever since I posted the first video on this, everybody wanted to see if 3DO, Sega Saturn, or Dreamcast would work on this. And yes, it definitely does, and I'm going to show you that right now. Previous videos, I've tested some PC games, the PlayStation 2 emulator, GameCube slash Wii emulator, and 3DS. All of them perform great. So I figured it was time to test some more emulators. I wanted to test out two of the main Sega Saturn emulators out there. First up, I'm going to be testing out the Beetle Saturn core inside of RetroArch. This is actually just a port of Manafin. It does take a pretty fast CPU to get this to run properly or at full speed. The next emulator I'm going to be testing is Yobasi. It's one of my favorites. I know it's not as accurate, but it does a great job on lower end systems. As you can see here, I have the FPS in the lower left hand corner and in the top left hand corner. We're not quite at 60 FPS. We will need a faster CPU for this to run. I'd say 3.7 to 4 gigahertz would get this up and running at 60 FPS. I am using the OpenGL backend inside of RetroArch. I've tried Vulkan and the other DirectX settings. Nothing runs as good as OpenGL. Vulkan gets very close, but I noticed I was at about 42 FPS. So if you want to use the Beetle Saturn Core or Manafin on one of these setups, it's kind of out of the question right now. Your best bet would be to use the standalone version of Yobasi, or Yobasa, however you want to pronounce it. It's not as accurate, but it works well on lower end systems like I mentioned. One issue I've always had, Virtua Fighter 2 using Yobasi has no sound. All of the other games I'm going to test do have sound, but unfortunately Virtua Fighter 2 just doesn't produce sound. It is running a lot better, as you can see we're at a steady 60 FPS. There are a few graphical glitches around our arms, I'm not sure if that's shadows or not. Just looks a little off to me. But it's running a lot better than the Beetle Saturn Core, at least on this setup here. Next game, Panzer Dragoon. Sound works great. Emulation is decent, I do notice a few stutters here and there. But overall, it's a really enjoyable experience on this PC. And finally, Radiant Silver Gun for Sega Saturn using the Yobasi emulator. 60 FPS, I don't notice any stutters or hiccups at all. It just works phenomenally on this system with this emulator.
Now we need to move to some 3DO emulation. We're going to be going back to RetroArch using a core called 4DO. Very awesome core, works on a lot of lower end systems. Really good 3DO emulator. Here's Gex. I did go into the main menu and turn the music off because I wasn't sure if it was copywritten or not. Sound works great when you have music playing. It's perfect. You can't really ask for much more than this. It really wouldn't be a 3DO test without Road Rash, so here it is. Now, as long as the game is compatible with the 4DO emulator, you should be able to pull off 60fps in most 3DO games. I know there are a few games out there that just don't run well at all on any kind of system, but as long as it's on the compatibility list for 4DO, you shouldn't have any trouble running it. Moving on to some Dreamcast emulation. Now for x86 Dreamcast emulation, there are pretty much two emulators that I always go to. Null DC, it's an older emulator, it hasn't been updated in a while, but it does run on lower end hardware very well. The next emulator is Demule, or Demule, however you want to pronounce it. It was updated not too long ago. It works really well, but you do need a decent CPU to get this up and running in a lot of these games. This is Marvel vs. Capcom 2. Not the best compatibility with this emulator, but it works great. A lot of people prefer running this specific game here in the Null DC emulator. You might have to swap back and forth with different games, but overall, it will handle both of these emulators. So the FPS is in the top left hand corner here. It's also in the menu bar at the very top. This emulator gives me trouble with Afterburner, showing you the GPU CPU RAM usage here. It duplicates itself and the first one stops. So the real one that's running is on top of the life bars. Next up, we got Aqua GT. I know a lot of people wanted to see Shamu, but I didn't want to sit there for 30 minutes getting past the intro to get into some gameplay and really do nothing inside of the game. I'm going to wait for those remasters to come out, and I'll be good to go. I'm 100% confident that this PC will handle Shamu either using this emulator or Null DC. The final game in this whole test, Sonic Adventure 2. Sound is on right now, I will have to shut it off because I can't turn the music off in the background and it is copywritten music, but I did want you to hear it for a second. The game is running almost flawlessly, I do notice some popping here and there. I'm not sure if that was on the original hardware or not, but as you can see we're at 60 FPS and the whole game just feels really smooth. So yeah, obviously it will handle 3DO, Dreamcast, and Sega Saturn. With Sega Saturn and Dreamcast, you might have to swap around different emulators for different games, 
But that's how it goes with emulation. Nothing's perfect, but we do have options to get really close. If you're interested in building a similar PC, I'll leave links in the description to Amazon and eBay. You can get a PC for about $90, then you're going to have to get the 1030 GPU for about $100, and an extra stick of RAM. Don't forget to check out part one and two, links are in the description and on screen now. If you guys could, hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, don't forget to turn notifications on so you know when I upload my next video, and like always, thanks for watching.